Hey, welcome back. Let's look at some inductive versus deductive reasoning. So inductive reasoning, if you recall, looks for patterns. You've got some key phrases like every Thursday or for the last five weeks or each time it rains. Those kind of phrases are the ones that really uh, signal an inductive reasoning. Whereas deductive reasoning, anytime you see facts, definitions, uh, vocab words, that kind of thing, that's going to be deductive reasoning. So every time you study for at least one hour for a quiz, you earn an A on the quiz. So yesterday you studied for 90 minutes and you assume that you will get an A on this quiz. Well, I don't see any vocab words. I don't see any definitions, no facts, nothing like that. I'm not using the law of syllogism. I'm not using the law of detachment. So this is going to be inductive. And for G, in an isosceles triangle, okay, interesting. I've got some vocab words here. The base angles are congruent. The angles of ABC are, I should say are, 40 degrees, 40 degrees, and 100 degrees. Therefore, ABC is an isosceles triangle. So here we use the definition of isosceles triangles. We proved that triangle ABC fit those definitions. So we said ABC must be an isosceles triangle. So this would be deductive reasoning. because we're using facts and definitions and laws of logic in order to state some conclusion. Now let's look at this next one that I hand wrote. For the last six Tuesdays, we have had a cross country meet. Next Tuesday, we will have a cross country meet. So for the last six Tuesdays, that's the kind of phrase you're looking for, for inductive reasoning. Those patterns that have happened in the past. Those are the ones that really key off there. And let's look at our law of detachment and law of syllogism. So H, if one and two are vertical angles, then they are equal. One and two are equal. So what can I conclude? Well, I can conclude that they are probably vertical angles. I can't say that for sure, but that's a good guess. It's a good conclusion or a good conjecture to make. So I haven't proven it. I don't know 100% if that is the case, but it could be. And I, if Chris is a sophomore, he takes English too. Chris is a sophomore, so what's my conclusion? Well, he's a sophomore, we know that he must take English too. And this last one, this law of syllogism. Whenever you're using the law of syllogism, if you remember that's if P then Q, if Q then R, therefore if P then R. So you're following step by step a series of events and you're saying what's the first event that happened and what was its final consequence? So I'm going to use the law of syllogism. If I pass geometry, I won't have to go to summer school. If I don't go to summer school, then I'll get a job. And if I get a job, then I'll make money. So I can conclude, I can jump to the conclusion that if I pass geometry, then I'll make money. Let me get rid of some of this stuff. So that's our inductive and deductive reasoning. Both of these types are deductive. 
And if you have any other questions, just send me an email.